Okay, welcome back to my mixed media channel. I'm Karen Campbell and I'm obsessed with drawing my fun fat faces. And I'm not sorry. I just came from my drawing channel where we drew this step by step, line by line from scratch. And I'm gonna color her in today using Tombow watercolor markers. <laughs> I feel terrible because last week I reviewed Tombow's alcohol markers and they were, okay, spoiler, they were terrible. And I feel so bad because I love Tombow the brand. I love their watercolor markers so freaking much. And I had to totally pan their alcohol markers, but I just had to because they were not good. So I want to make it up to Tombow today. Nothing is sponsored in any of these videos. I'm just telling you like it is from my own experience. And I love their markers. I love their other markers. So I just wanted to, to I was just feeling really bad. It's like a normal human because I, yeah, I panned them. So today we are doing Tombow dual brush pens i have reviewed them many times before in the channel but i'll just like again i just feel bad so we're gonna do them again so i am i have bought their no joke their dual brush pen portrait set three full times over the years and that's because i do genuinely draw so many freaking fun fab faces because i cannot get enough coming up and changing the different Facial features and hair and colors is just endlessly fun. If you've ever, if you've ever drawn faces, you know how it's totally addicting and I'm, I'm not sorry about it. I freaking lean right in. So I love their portrait set because it makes grabbing different pens, you know, really fast and easy. So they have, you know, great colors. They have the, they run the gamut from light to dark, medium. They have some pink shades in there. So I really do highly recommend them. I'm not going to go in too, too in depth on all the colors, except for to say that grab the portrait set. You will not be sorry. Um, they have a 10 color set. You get a lot more than what you bargain for, but I love that they really do hit all light, medium, dark, which is really important because some, I review a lot of uh, skin tone sets. I actually have published an entire book on how to draw with skin tones. Uh, case in point, this is my skin tone secrets book. I'm not trying to plug my books. What I'm trying to do is just let you know that I have a lot of experience drawing and coloring faces and I just want to pass on the information that I think would be most useful to you. So let's color her in. Um, you can click the eye in the corner on the screen now if you want to go and watch and make this first with me and then we're going to color her here. Now, I'm not doing the full, full marker review other than to say really do truly go buy their stuff, but before you draw any face, you should, actually, you should take a minute and just scribble, squatch your colors because you don't want any surprises. Surprises are bad. Okay, don't make yourself super mad at yourself from not just taking five freaking seconds. That's too orange for me. Just scribble so you know what you're getting into. Now, what makes these markers so magical in case you're new to, now I like these ones. Now you can start picking the shades that you like. Um, I like these two is that when you add water, they melt. I oh, the closest brush I have is this Gigondo one. So they will kind of smear around. So that's what makes them so magical and so different from regular markers is, yeah, they are water soluble, which means when you add water, they melt. So now I've obliterated. <laughs> now I've obliterated my samples and I need to just retest. Now, in addition to melting your colors with water, you can also blend them together just using the juiciness of your markers themselves. So some people gloss over that part, so I just wanna make sure that you're aware that that's a thing too, actually. So, again, I'm just taking a minute. Oh, that's a nice, like, lovely starting point. I think I will choose these four. It's always good to have at least three shades when you are coloring a face. It's good to have three. Now, before I begin, it's also a really of utmost, like I can't overemphasize this enough, you have to work on watercolor paper when you're working with wet media. Um, you just, just have to, you have to, because if you don't, there's bad consequences. Your paper will buckle. 
your watercolors and your water soya mediums are not going to blend. So those two reasons alone are reasons enough for me. Your work looks like it looks it. You'll be so upset because you went through all that time and effort to draw and then color and then it just looks like crap because your paper can't even hold up to it. So do yourself a favor, grab yourself just a block of watercolor paper. I will put the link in the description box of some affordable ones for you. And your faces will thank you. Like, it, you're worth it. You're worth the extra couple bucks. So let's color her in. So this is cold pressed watercolor paper. And, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So when I'm using Tombow's, <clears throat> I like to... And I actually, I do this with all art supplies. I will start with covering the whole face. Like sweep the whole character with one light color. Now, super important detail to keep in mind is that graphite is also water soluble, okay? especially dark graphite like I've been using. So if you start getting smearing, I want you to know this up front. So erase a better if that's gonna super bother you. I'm just a messy mixed media artist, so I don't care. But most people do care. I am an anomaly and I know that about myself. So if you're gonna be upset about having any sort of smear imperfection, then you're gonna really wanna make sure you take care to erase any line. You can even go so far as to like erase even your main lines back, okay? I'm just sort of used to, I just do so many faces. I kind of just naturally stay away from my graphite as much as possible, but um, if you don't have all those years of experience, you might not realize how you know important that can be. And again, most people are, like most normal people are particular. I'm just a hot mess and I love it. But I do, but I know if that's important to you, then definitely erase more than I'm erasing. Okay, so I will take like the lightest color. And again, this is any kind of art supply. And I usually like cover, do like a wash over the whole face. Now this is my, our, my mixed media channel. So here we talk a lot about how different mediums go together. And I do like to use gesso for when I'm using watercolor markers, that can help a lot to smooth things out. So I don't start out with it, but I do have it kind of at the ready. So if I start mashing these together and like my colors are not blending or it looks pretty ugly, I will use gesso to smooth it out. So do I don't know that I'm gonna need it, but I will have it at the ready. And that's like super normal. So that's, um, that's like pass number one. And that color was eight. 50. This is 942. And well, what I'm going to do is actually grab my skin tone secret book, um, which I have reviews on this. I will have a link to this down below as well if you want to look. But we want to pick uh, a shading. This book teaches you how to identify the shading pattern on your face, but also the layers that you need to get there, and also the colors if you're buying the Ohuhu skin tone pack. However, you don't need, to, you can use it just for what I'm using it for right now, which is just shading pattern. So wear on the face and colors. So I guess I will do like this shading pattern and this is how I get there. Step one, step two, step three. So step one is a color all over, which we just did. Step two is, okay, I'm just gonna follow here. Okay, so I'm going to do along the hairline. This is on page 51. I actually love this book so much. I gave it to all, all of my club members, all my Fun Fab Drawing Club members, and all of my Mixed Media Society members, and all of my Celtic Collective members. I gave them a free copy when I published it. You get it right when you sign up. Uh, uh, not the paperback version, but the ebook. And um, because I use it all the time, because I would do so many faces, it's so helpful to just be able to like grab and go and not like reinvent the shading wheel every time you go to do a project. Okay, so we have this. 
So it's, I'm just literally following this picture right here so I know exactly what to do. And there's like in-depth descriptions on how, like why, why you do this in the book as well, as well. But this lesson is how to color this in, in Tombows and not about the book. I have another separate videos on that. So this whole side, shoom, I'm just, again, just following my little thumbnail pictures there, goes here. And then it's on. So basically the light source is on the left and so everything on the right will be shaded. And you can kind of make this circle as like big or as small as you want depending on the effect you want to go for. Okay, so that's number three. And then number four, this is just one shade darker, is basically that's this step. It's basically you do everywhere you just went, but you just make that area like a little, little bit smaller. And then what we'll do, most exciting part, is we'll take our water and we'll, we're gonna brush it over the same, the whole thing, just like I just did on my little scrapbook when I was showing you my swatches. Okay. Under the nose, again under here. It looks crazy until you like get it all blended. This is what we call the ugly phase and this is when most people quit. But this, we're just halfway done. So, you know, don't, don't quit halfway. That would be like quitting when you only have your like t-shirt and underwear on, you forgot your pants. Like, of course it's gonna look weird. Of course you wouldn't show it to anybody or go out in public. It's like it's not done yet. So we just need to finish <laughs> and then you can show it. I need to find my brush. So this is a great, I have my three layers. So this is just water. I'm using my favorite, one of my favorite watercolor brushes from artist Polina Bright, who I admire. Talk about faces, holy moly. Her, she is a face drawing, just genius. And she makes wonderful brushes, I love. So now we can just take plain water and I can just kind of run it over here. Now remember I talked about the gesso. So after I do this, if things are not like moving as well as I want them to, which totally happens with Tombows sometimes, then I will bring in the big guns with the gesso and get some better smoothing blending going. Now I'm actually gonna try a mop brush. So they hold a little bit more water. Come on, little moppy. There you go. Sometimes you really do need to get some water going to like get things moving. But I love Tombas. They come in a ton of colors, like tons and tons of colors. Like I forget a lot. I have them all. <laughs> That's how much I love them. And they are really great, but I do find sometimes that they just don't really want to move very much. I mean, you saw what happens on this paper that you know they do move, <laughs> but sometimes they just like don't feel like it. And I can feel that they don't feel like it. And that's when I use my brush, my gesso to kind of help get things moving around. So sometimes I'll use the power of my brush so between the water, but then the actual like bristles can help get things moving a little bit better. Okay. So it is just starting to kind of blend together, but it's still a little, it's a little choppy. And again, some people are like, do not like that whatsoever. So this is what I would do to fix it. And just so you know, with mixed media, a couple of things. Number one, 
So much of mixed media is about problem solving. It's not even about creating. It's how do you bend the art supplies to, to work and give you the effect that you're looking for is really truly what it can be about. And that shouldn't be an intimidating process. That's actually part of the fun and the exhilaration of it is finding what those workarounds actually are. So actually now that I'm sitting here looking like it's actually not too bad. But I can, I just know, because I've been teaching for so long, like this would really piss some people off. This sort of like seeing the lines in here, like people would be very unhappy with that, even though actually when it's all said and done, it would actually look very like painterly. But I do want to share with you some great ways that you can fix some of those jaggy problems. So let's do one at a time. So one choice before we bust out the gesso, cause that's gonna kind of wipe out everything. The first thing that you can do to help this look is they grab a palette or just, just a kitchen plate, honestly. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my medium color because they're the biggest kind of the, what's jarring is that the, the difference between the light and the darkest, it might be too much. So I'm gonna take the middle, I'm gonna have a squeaky party, apparently, and I'm gonna put some out on a plate, <laughs> okay? And so I have like, it's almost like becoming watercolor. So I can pick this up now with my brush and put it lovingly in some of the areas that I don't, that are too streaky or that I'm not loving. Now clearly you're gonna need kind of a lot because I just picked that up. It's hard to get the ink out of the marker to like stick on to my plate, but you can do it. You know, I wouldn't do a whole piece this way, but if you're just kind of fixing, you can kind of go and you know, rub it over some of the areas and that might be enough for you. Squeak, squeak to you know, patch things over in a way that makes you happy. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. The second thing that you can try is to dry all of this layer. So my paper is pretty wet from all that water. So the second way that you can help improve the look of that streakiness is to dry this. So I have a hair dryer that's plugged in next to me all the time. I'm gonna dry this with my hair dryer and when I come back I'll show you this, the number the way number two. All right so she's all dry now so another thing that I like to do is simply go back and do more than one layer. So this is something a lot of people kind of forget about. I think they you know do everything they do all the blending, they do the water, they do the things, and then they're like, ah, oh, and then they are sad, and then they give up and they stop. But what you may not do, and maybe you do this already, so good for you, that's awesome, um, is you just keep going. <laughs> you just gotta keep going. So a lot of times I will have to start back, you know, I'll just start back in, at the beginning, especially if I'm not happy with the blending. Um, and as I mentioned when I was like just doing a quick swatching is that you can also blend with just the markers themselves, right? So maybe I'm going back, this is the first color that I started with, and maybe I'm not even, you don't even have to wet them by the way, you could just use them dry and be like, all right, I'm just gonna see, kind of, if just skimming over this with just one more layer of say the lightest color, maybe I can get it to, you know, smooth over some of these edges I might not be super stoked about. Maybe we can, but you, the only way to know for sure is to, to give it a shot. Okay, so just kind of lightly rubbing this over. I do also find with Tomo, sometimes if you give them too long to kind of quote unquote set in, like they do, so you want to kind of hit them with water sooner rather than later. So don't wait till it's all done. Like this is still kind of fresh. So now try running water over it, and it might you might have a smoother kind of application. And you might not, but the only way to know is to go for it. Okay. So my second suggestion would be to don't don't put your marker in while it's wet that's a great way to kill your marker I hadn't put water down here again yet okay but also with mixed media especially with faces 
Um, typically, what I find is that it's all these layers and layers and layers that actually end up, you know, making quite the luminous look to your characters. Okay. So again, here is my second layer. And then while it's still super duper wet, you know, I'll see if that can move a little bit better. And so that might be a way that it can help you blend. Now, sometimes then you get sort of undesirable <laughs> side effects coming in when you're like, oh no, now I have like a weird line there. Well, again, don't give up. Just keep going for goodness sake. It happens. Just keep futzing on it a little bit, but not like, don't go crazy. That's another thing people do sometimes. They go a little crazy. You're looking for perfection with mixed media. You know, just keep in mind that part of the fun is, is not having the perfection and keeping it light and painterly is, is a wonderful thing. So try to, if you can let go of some of that expectations and just try to have fun. You never really know where it will kind of lead you. Okay, this is the darkest, kind of putting it around. So I'm actually quite happy with it, but I will show you the gesso because I did mention it, so I don't wanna just leave you with nothing. And it's also a great way that you can add little highlighted regions. So I'm gonna grab my gesso and I will show you, and that will be the step three that I was talking about, how ways you can kind of smooth things over or fix them. All right, so this is what I would do with gesso if I needed a little bit more smoothing help. I would just put a little bit in a bowl and with a really rough brush that I am not <laughs> precious about, I'm gonna put a little bit about on my dry, dry brush. And I want this to also be super dry. So this is a really my favorite way for making little subtle highlights on actually a lot of my mixed media projects. Is this is so sneaky. So what's nice about gesso is that it's actually a little bit transparent. Now your brush, you wanna be like really dry, like barely any, kind of barely any gesso on there to be honest. Because what happens is for the areas that you want highlighted, you can just smoosh in just a little bit of gesso on your dry paper and it makes this kind of like halo-y glow. You're like, oh, that's kind of nice. So like, I'm gonna add like a strip up the nose because a lot of times there's like a highlight up there. I'm like just putting, I'm just touching my brush to like the tiniest edge of that gesso. And like swiping it up the nose. I always say up the nose. I'm like, no, on the nose, up the bridge, on top the up the bridge of the nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we can do like the little ball of the nose. And like there was kind of like an ugly line in the middle. And this can help very softly and subtly kind of eliminate that line. You can sometimes I like to have a little glow like on the forehead too. There's like a little flat spot on the forehead. And again, you're just taking that gesso. And this is also such another reason why you absolutely have to work on watercolor paper because watercolor paper is tough, man. And it can handle all the three layers that we put on and the gesso and the everything. So it's so worth it. We can put another little glow on this side. Look at how glowy we are, you guys. Now, obviously, if you put this on the dark spot, it is gonna cover over, so you might not like that it's obliterating all your work, in which case you'd have to kind of go over it again. And to be clear, this is white gesso. This is not clear gesso, so it is, it is a little bit white. Okay, but this is a really nice way to get a glow back. And any areas that you might want to kind of highlight or bring forward. So I like to do like the brow bone is a nice place, but see how it's kind of becoming softer looking everywhere. Okay, so I'm dry brushing. Again, barely anything on my brush to get this effect, but you start getting this kind of I don't know, I want to say like smoky or something, but like a soft 
soft look. So when you zoom out, do you see how it's a lot softer? You know? So that's a kind of a nice hot tip to be aware of if you want to work. You could try incorporating a little gesso into your blending. All right, let's finish this up now that we've gone over different kinds of ways that we can kind of fix and doodle our way around. Ooh, Tombos. Now, fun little hair tricks. Also, having like three shades. I like to do three shades of everything. So three shades of skin tone. And this is why I bought all the Tombos because I want to have three shades of hair. Look at that. One, two, three. Ready to rock and roll. Whoa! <laughs> Dush my old water thing over. So I do the same thing with the hair that I did with the skin, actually. It's so fun. So you can start with the lightest. Okay. And I love to make this, I love making hair this way because it makes it look like there's a big shiny spot right there. And that's by putting the lightest shade, you're gonna go from root towards the center and lift up your brush. Okay? So it's, it's actually staying the white of the paper here. Okay? Okay, so that's the lightest color. Oh, I almost got out a little cute little bun. Now, this is really yucky from all my graphite, so I'm gonna race back again. It's a little hard because her earring is in the way, but that's okay. So again, decide where you want the highlight in her bun to be. I'm gonna have it like going this way. I don't know, just because I already started. <laughs> okay, so whoop, just way outside the lines. Like a... Remember, mixed medias can be really loose and fun. So this is a great opportunity to kind of be loose. All right, now I'm going to take color number two, second darkest. And just like I did the skin, I'm going to make this, like, not go as far. So every time you go a shade darker, you leave more of the other color behind. I'm going to expose. This is so fun, you guys. Okay, see how there's a longer overlap? of the first color. And doesn't it already look shiny? We've only done two colors. So freaking fun. Okay. Okay, same thing. Here's our little bun bun. Whoa, I keep <laughs> going way out of the lines. Like I can't color. <laughs> And then we have color number three. I think actually their Tombow actually even has a fourth shade. And this again is why Tombows are awesome. Okay, so we have this. All right, you don't even have to add water. You can already see this kind of coming to life. Shump, 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 shump. Right. <clears throat> we have this big funny ball. <laughs> and then we could even, I, I have to get it because it's like staring me in the face. This is even the darkest one. We could even go one darker. So yeah, the more shades, the better. Again, this will all be dark because it's behind. And see how every shade we go is just darker and darker, amazing. I'm gonna give her some pretty brown eyes. And I'm gonna give her some pretty pink lips. Okay, and I will just drag a brush through her hair. Okay, just kind of like this. So 
So I'm starting at the dark and I'm just swishing softly up. Okay, now this time I'm getting lots of blending. Gorgeous. And again, you can just leave, leave the middle, just leave it white. Okay, so again, I'm doing the same strokes with my brush as I did with my markers, which is just root to tip and then kind of tip towards the root. Same exact thing. My brush is just damp. It's not super wet. It's just damp. Okay. And again, you can try those other techniques if you want to smooth that out. But look how glowy her hair is. It's my freaking favorite. And ooh, let's do her earrings. I feel like her earrings could be definitely some purple. Again, there's this is why I recommend getting the whole set. You have all your shades. So you just always do dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light to mess around with this stuff. It's so fun. So if the light is coming this way, then it would be lighter on, you know, that side. And then it would be, I'm not sure I have the right shades though. Always test. I really can't emphasize enough how important it is to test your colors. No one likes to be surprised. This might be the same color. I've bought these so many times. Oh, this is 603 and this is 623. You don't, don't set yourself up for a surprise. All right, that's a different shade altogether. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. And again, we can have kind of the bottom dangles. One thing. leaving a little bit of white in the middle so it looks like it's a little a little shimmer and then again I can just take whoa oh I just got water over two books a drawing and yeah that's great <laughs> okay and so we can just blend them kind of together there and then don't worry we'll be adding punchy highlights so I'm going to dry this all with my hair dryer. And then when I come back, I'm just going to doodle in the rest. She needs some defining. And I personally am an outliner. I love to outline my work. So I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do that. And then she'll be done. All right. So this is the last finale. So this is my favorite part. I'm a doodler and I love to doodle on my drawings. Um, but I also love this pencil pocket brush pen um, for all my mixed media projects as well. So um, yeah, so the, my favorite way of finishing a lot of my mixed media projects as well as my drawings are by kind of outlining things with my brush pen. Can I give her some lower lashes? Here's some little downturn lashes. I thought I would try something new. I lost her little, her little eyelid got lost in the shuffle there. So I'm putting that back. And again, if you want to learn how to draw this, I did that already today over on my drawing channel. You can go check it out. <clears throat> so I just like to outline because then you can, you know, see everything. You can also add some like hair streaks if you want to. Now there's a little bit of a learning curve to use this sucker, I'm not going to lie, but that's okay. It's just because it's so, you have actual bristles, so it matters how much um, pressure you apply, basically. So if you apply a little bit of pressure, you'll get a really light line, and if you apply a lot of pressure, well, you can have a super black line. <laughs> So you do have to be a little bit careful if you're new. She's got a little bit of a sneaky, suspicious face, doesn't she? But isn't that a nice break from boring, resting bitch face or expressionless face? Um, on this channel, I also have my 
100 Fun Fab Faces Challenge. If you are really into drawing these faces, you can also subscribe to my drawing channel where I'm going to be doing these kind of all year long. Decided I love it so much. Why, why find it? So yeah, there's a little, little outlining to kind of punch up. Oh, she's no lashes. Punch up and get her going. And of course, for added, added highlights, you can always go in with my other favorite product that I'm obsessed with, and I'm not sorry about it, is you can always add lovely, juicy highlights with my favorite highlighting uh, highlighting product, which is this Copic. My husband got this for me a few years ago and I'm absolutely obsessed. My husband doesn't know anything about art supplies. Um, nothing. I don't know where he got this, found it. I don't know how he learned it, but it's my favorite. It's my favorite art supply ever since, which is hilarious. <laughs> so here we go. We have our little lovely Tombow filled girl today. I hope you learned lots about how you can use Tombows and also how you can kind of fix Tombows if you're not happy with them. And then, you know, a lot of people will get on me because they don't have good backgrounds. So what I'll do, I'm just going to add a random, this is just random. I don't even know what's in here. Now, hmm, oh, here's a good pink. Here's a good pink and Dee Dee. Ooh, ooh, I also have, ooh, Rose of Ultramarine is so satisfying. So, just to satisfy my critics about my lack of backgrounds, here we go. You have a mixed media background in less than two minutes. This is Rose of Ultramarine, which is a lovely color. This one is from Daniel Smith and it granulates, oh, I mixed it in with her hair, be careful. Uh, it granulates into pink and purples on your page as it, as it separates, which is kind of magical. And it's very similar to um, Imperial Purple, which is might be even one of my even bigger favorite colors by Daniel Smith, which also granulates into pink and purple. So kind of the opposite. This has more pink than purple, and Imperial Purple has more purple than pink. So, how's that for a tongue twister? And Imperial Purple is right next to Ultramarine in my palette, so I'm gonna put them both in the same project. Ha ha, how's that for extra? Extra specialness, plus it ties in the pink of her awesome earrings, right? Jazzes up our boring page, and when it continues to dry, it'll just have kind of cooler and cooler effects. So thanks for arting with me today. If you learned anything at all, please give me a thumbs up. And you know what? The more people that we can get to art together, art is just so good for our soul. It's so good for our heart. It makes us feel better while we're doing it. it. Makes us feel accomplished when we're done. Share this video out with a friend. Share it to a Facebook group that you are a member of that you love. And come and join my Facebook group too. All the information will be in the description box below. I had such a fun time today. Thank you so much for arting. And I will see you in the next video.